I found out that by uh, setting up a network drive, I was able to just put all the code base of WordPress on that shared network drive and just keep all my files uh, that I'm developing. So whether it's a theme or plugin, doesn't matter. So I got a clean sort of development environment, right? Um, found it the hard way, then I found out about Packer. I thought, hey, I'm an autodidact, I can do it. Our info, just briefly, is just configuration file for Packer. You can see all right. The folder structure, that is after a build, a local build of Packer. So you can see here the output. And I, I'm sorry, I'm assuming that everybody knows about Packer and how it works. Who doesn't know about Packer and how it works? Okay, so I do apologize, but so briefly, quickly. Uh, Preceding file, this the HTTP folder is for the pre-seed file. It's what is going to automate the Ubuntu server installation or Ubuntu VM. The output virtual box ISO is just the output of what you get building that VM, that initial VM. Uh, the Packer cache, it's just the cache where Packer puts the ISO uh, of uh, of the Ubuntu installation disk. Uh, <coughs> scripts, my local uh, bash scripts for provisioning the machine. A git ignore, which is actually not relevant. Uh, readme file, which is also not relevant. Uh, then this is what we're going to be building. It's a sort of localized virtual box, or vagrant box, sorry. And this is our, finally, uh, Packer configuration file, where all the settings of Packer will be. So Packer reads a configuration file that's written in JSON, as you can see from the extension. Um, again, I'm very not well prepared, because I thought the talk was actually tomorrow. <laughs> I was that convinced it was tomorrow. So my slides are really out well, my about. Anyway, that's relevant, thank you. <laughs> Our tools is Vagrant Packer. I'm assuming that everybody's got VirtualBox as well installed um, because I'm no VMware guy. <laughs> uh, right, a little bit about the Packer template overview. Uh, so you have builders, which is so the configuration for your first virtual machine, what you get out of the so, right, that you have to download. The provisioner, which is your set of bash scripts, which is going to provision, install some packages. Again, to my specific use case, it was Samba, because I want to have the network share. Uh, as well as some vag vagrant uh, setup, really minimal, just a standard bash script that we will come see uh, a bit later. Third one is a post processor, and that's uh, really, I suppose, the easiest bit out of our Packer configuration. Uh, this is what tells us to create the vagrant box. And Packer handles this very well. You don't need multiple of options. And uh, but again, we'll see it further down the line. So, um, Yes, so my Packer configuration file structure was split up in three parts, the builder, provisioner, host processor. And so the builder. <laughs> it's uh, an overwhelming bit. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to point out the biggest struggle that I had in it. And that was certainly at this level. <laughs> This is uh, the so-called brute command, and once you have all this gibberish, it's going to launch the ISO, the installer of your Ubuntu server, or local VM, Ubuntu VM, sorry. And take in the pre-seed file, which is a Debian configuration file for Ubuntu, to automate all that stuff. 
<coughs> so it doesn't use a base image, but it actually runs the Ubuntu installer? Yes, okay. exactly. Now, if I'm lucky, it works. It should work. <laughs> Why it's not yes. really readable. Oh, I f I was sure about that. Sorry. R2T is anything. Uh, yeah. Oh, can it better? I see the screen. Is this better? Yeah. 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 Windows has colors? <laughs> Surprisingly. Wow. Yeah, blue. blue thing. <laughs> so now I'm just going to launch quickly uh, a command to build it. Uh, and I'm going to talk through the first bit of my configuration file, which was the builder and the things that was. Um, Pain at PITA, say properly. So now we wait. Now we wait. Uh, but sorry, Packer now is going to first go for the for the builder. Uh, part of my uh, configuration file, my Packer configuration file, and just do this all by itself as by magic. And this was this S, S enter something? Yeah. Yes. Wow. And it's here's the question. thing, right? This boot command is certainly, and thankfully, on, uh, in the Packer documentation. <laughs> Uh, they set an example on how to go about it. Uh, now, again, I wanted my box to be sort of like localized, uh, so I did try to set up my keyboard already. I have an English computer that runs, unfortunately, Windows. Um, so I started by setting those keyboard configuration. I found it very hard to find. I had to Google quite a lot. So my tools is not only Packer and Vagrant, but it's also ultimately Google. Um, like I said, the pre-seed file is here taken over in this bit. Packer is going to start some sort of server and send that uh, pre-seed file to the installation. Uh, to the VM. And this is what a pre seed file looks like. I've put the reference here because by magic, when you go to that link, you'll have actually already a sort of like personalized pre seed file. So you don't have to spend too much time mm -hmm. with it. Uh, but again, I want it to be localized. So I spent quite a lot of time setting up that keyboard that ultimately I found out wasn't really taken into account, weirdly enough. Uh, but most importantly, the mirror settings. I'm obviously, well, not obviously, <laughs> I'm living in Amsterdam, which is in the Netherlands. Uh, I could have just left this bit to the default, and it's going to just get to the universal, I would say, uh, or worldwide uh, Ubuntu registry to get packages but I felt it was just a bit more quicker to just use the Dutch mirror. And so this is basically why here you see nl.archive. <coughs> this is what it's going to exactly do now. I also set here uh, my time locally. Uh, maybe People would say there's no really use to do it right now, but might as well just get on with it. And uh, all the room, primarily everything is really much default of what you get. 
uh, when you go to the link that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but now, the, I suppose one of the most important parts is here setting up the first uh, user account. Because again, we're going to make a vagrant box, uh, and it's, all, it's just going to be always local and never leave, you know, and you never leave my local computer. We're going to work very securely by just setting up Vagrant as a default user and Vagrant as a password. And it's going to help us all along up to making our box. Um, package selection is also, I would say, an important bit. Uh, because right off the bat, after the installation or after the builder's Part of our configuration file is done. You know the machine is going to reboot, etc. So we already want OpenSSH, or sorry, SSH to be available to us uh, for the provisioning part. So we already install SSH, build essential because that's always useful. So that's pretty much all the I would say default developer tools. Uh, LibSSL. I'm not sure anymore <laughs> why I put it in there, but I put it in there. And DKMS. DKMS, why? Uh, we're using VirtualBox as a virtual machine. VirtualBox has this thing called uh, Virtual Guest Editions, which is a bunch of drivers for a virtual machine, but that's specifically for VirtualBox, right? And this is going to help us just install it without any problem. I already defined it here as opposed to just defining it uh, in my provisioning scripts as well. Just for ease and just to be sure that it's already there once that's uh, the virtual guest editions uh, are, set, are being set up by our provisioning scripts. That's for the preceding file. Um, it's quite a lot. Uh, I had a horrible time looking for answers. It's not that straightforward. Uh, there's at the end of my slides. There's also like a link to references about specifically how preceding works. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail. Um, Can I have a question? What's, yes. What does this preceding file configure exactly? Is this some configuration for the Ubuntu installer or for Packer or? Yes, uh, for the Ubuntu installer. Okay. So this is what uh, the first time that I launched it. You'd see that VirtualBox uh, display pop up, and you yeah. would see all those things. This is exactly what the preset file is about. Good. Just a quick look as well. Uh, here you see uh, Vagrant, Vagrant, Vagrant. We set up as default user vagrants in our pre-seed file because vagrants is going to be the one that's primarily going to use this box, right? And so we have to use vagrant all along. Here it just says, uh, this is a shutdown command that says take in the password vagrant to shut down, to do the sudo and then shut down the machine uh, and uh, leave us without any problems whatsoever. Uh, VBox Manage, these are all uh, specific VirtualBox configurations that you can find out uh, by looking through the documentation of VBox Manage, I would say. <laughs> uh, in my case, I really don't need much. Uh, so I just set up the amount of memory I want on the CPU that I need, and we're just good to go. Once that is done, the building step, so our ESO box is now already way beyond the building uh, step. Packer is going to default, <coughs> it's not going to default, just going to switch over to the, third, to the second part, sorry, which is the provisioning. Like I said earlier, provisioning is just uh, a set of uh, provisioning scripts, bash scripts. 
and uh, it follows a certain <coughs> order. Well, not a certain order, but just exactly the order that you declare it. Uh, there as well is some sort of convention. When you look out, uh, when you look for other Packer configurations on GitHub or wherever, uh, you'd see that uh, most of the time the provisioning files are separated in different smaller files. Um, this is also where uh, you want to put any other default packages or programs or whatnot uh, that you want your favorite box to have uh, in the end. So again, in my case, it was Samba. I would personally recommend when you have uh, when you have when when you need a program that uh, takes uh, longer than two lines to uh, configure and install. I would just put it in a separate script and then call it uh, from, uh, from your uh, script array. So that you just have a concise script and you know what it does and eventually you can even just reuse it somewhere else if need be. going to set up my vagrant user to be able to uh, sudo without passwords later on uh, when my box is done. And that's pretty much it. This is really just, uh, I would say, very much the very, very first step you're going to want to do is setting up uh, your vagrant user as passwordless sudo. Then all along, uh, let's go back to the array. So all along here, uh, I set up a Samba script to install Samba. Uh, the, my Samba file was apparently more than two lines. So again, uh, I would recommend if a program that you install is longer than just two lines, uh, just put it in a, in a separate script and it just makes sense to me. <laughs> There's no other reason why you would want to do that. Uh, very important part is the Vagrant uh, script. And this is going to set uh, the first insecure Vagrant key. So when you boot up Vagrant, usually what it does uh, if you leave all the defaults of that configuration, etc., it's going to change that uh, insecure private key by another random key. But for that, it needs to have it available from the get-go. Uh, the box needs to have it available uh, inside of it. So this is where we do all the magic. Again, it's also very pretty standard. Uh, mm, there's no much like magic into it. Second uh, important provisioning script is uh, to already to already uh, put in uh, to already install your VirtualBox guest editions. So again, guest editions is that VirtualBox part that installs all the drivers to make your uh, virtual machine work properly with VirtualBox. Uh, this is something I forgot to mention earlier on. It's something we set actually in the builder part. Uh, there is a small option to set a uh, version a file with the version of VirtualBox that you're using. And it is exactly the same version that you will find at some point in the VirtualBox <laughs> guest edition ISO file. And we use it back in here so that we're sure that uh, so here in this instance is uh, 5.16 make sure that it gets VBOX guest edition uh, 
and once uh, you will uh, add your box and launch it, if you use something like uh, the Vagrant for, uh, plugin for uh, VB guests, automatic, automatically sorry, updates the virtual guest additions, you would say it's just already at the latest and you don't have to do anything anymore. Lastly, the third part. Oops. is the post processor and really nice again Packer does all the things for you you don't have to configure much more than just state what the name of your box will be uh, the type of uh, post processor that should be building and uh, vagrants there's a bunch of other post processors <coughs> and it's just vagrants that you want and You'd be, once your script goes all, all the way, and let's see it's finished, yeah, it finished without errors, right. Uh, you get here this one, Ubuntu box, or Vagrant box, which afterwards you only need to do a, a Vagrant box add, and, uh, you see, just to round it up, uh, And here you see it, touch box, and uh, so yeah, uh, any question? I have a question, why would you use Packer? Why do you, why did you use it? Right, um, so exactly, that was actually also one of those introduction bits. Um, so aside of me just wanting to be able to just have my IDE configured with only the files that I needed to develop. Uh, there was also the fact uh, that I wanted really, I just fairly just needed constantly this Samba, uh, the Samba uh, program to create a network share. And uh, instead of when I download a um, um, a vagrant configuration uh, that's available on GitHub. I didn't want to personally go in all the vagrant file and change because there's actually uh, a shared folder setting for Samba uh, with vagrants. I didn't want to go in that uh, configuration file, uh, change it all myself, or even just adding another provisioning script just to install Samba. So in that sense, uh, the only when I download an already made configuration for Vagrant from somewhere on GitHub or anywhere else, I just need to change uh, the box in my configuration file, and uh, and the provisioning script from that configuration that I downloaded is just going to go smoothly. Uh, again, in this. It is, of course, only directed to uh, Vagrant configurations that uses Ubuntu uh, as a as default box. If I can add something, because I've been asked the same question, and I was using Packer, and still using Packer a lot. If you have the environments that are not only virtual box, but also like, you name it, VMware, ABIs, whatever, it is very useful to have one source of building them all if you need to produce the same images but for different virtualization technologies whatever you use the same provisioners not mandatory bash them you scared like you know obviously there are a lot of other things yeah ansible whatever so if you have your whatever deployments happening and you want to you know pipeline streamline it to build whatever images yes yeah, certainly so that is also useful certainly. this certainly. was just you know Right, the example about one of the boxes. Yeah. So. 
can you describe the debug process? Because uh, now it looks like uh, the whole process can be quite painful when you when something goes wrong. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it is very much. <laughs> uh, and that's actually quite important. Like building an Oracle stack. Um, so it's the way I set up my dash scripts, I always, uh, I, I always do it with functions, and then have uh, and call those functions at the end of my script. Uh, and for Packer specifically, uh, I set this bash option uh, to minus x, which will give us any, uh, yeah, which will actually just output anything that your script is now doing. And if there are errors, you can just follow along. Uh, you could set also uh, minus e, and if I remember correctly, that will just uh, uh, stop the provisioning whatsoever on error. On your first error, so that's one of the ways you could debug uh, <coughs> your provisioning, of uh, or perhaps to me the only way that I know of to debug uh, your provisioning of a vacuum box. So setting the flag minus x and minus e uh, is definitely uh, recommended. Uh, the uh, first short debug packet. Sorry. Don't stop executing a step at the little place, and you can go on machine and see what. Right. What's wrong with that? Packer itself can stop. Oh, okay. So you can like submit what step you want, like if a crew behind okay. pre-built, possible, whatever. Excellent. I need to look into it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was I was gonna ask about the use case, but you've already you've already covered that. I mean, give, you know, give me a flavor for, for how you use Packer, which is nice, because I've been looking at it a couple of times and thinking, should I go that route? Um, and I'm still in my case, I'm still it's quite a lot of work to what you've done to, to build it. Um, when I look at the HashiCorp documentation, it's always quite minimalistic. You, yours is quite nice because you can actually see all the templates. Did you you mentioned it was quite hard work to find that? You, you're not finding it all on the HashiCorp website? No, uh, and it was specifically directed uh, to the first step uh, of the Packer configuration, which is uh, the builder. Yeah. Right? Uh, really pertaining to how to automate the installation of uh, Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, I, I lost many hours because, again, I'm just a developer. I don't really also don't have big computer science background. Uh, and I could say I'm just a hobbyist <laughs> uh, building those things. Uh, so yeah, that was really just the, the main pain point. Because for all the rest, uh, when well, you also just the pre-seed was quite complicated too. The pre-seed yes. config, I was, you know. Uh, yes, this is what I mean as well uh, when I say the, the building side of it. That was really painful. So I'd be quite curious to find out if you've got any good links. So I, I look at the the, the HashiCorp documents and I'm thinking, oh, that's not. I can't quite see where you, where you get that information from. But I mean, if you could afterwards, I'll yes, yes. But, uh, but bootment is different for every. Um, uh, distribution of Linux, yeah. read as you have Kickstart instead of Preseed. Right. So it's probably not the best place to look for this on the SC Corp documentation. Yeah, it's in the official documents of Ubuntu, for example. Yeah, you, you can still find the basic default version. It, it might not work. You know, you might sit and, and look at it, not putting, you know, but then you can customize it. Yeah, yeah I mean, sometimes I switch between CentOS and Ubuntu, so I, I need to be aware of those differences. But I just want to—I mean, I just want to work out where do I find that information. Yeah. So, in the case of in the case yeah. of, in, in the case <laughs> of Ubuntu, um, this is the direct link, and I'll, I'll put it later online and forward it to you. Uh, this is the direct link about uh, the preceding bit okay, of excellent. automating a uh, of automating an Ubuntu installation. Okay, I'm not. I went through the process once. I'll, it'll become easier, and then if I switch from Ubuntu to Red Hat, I'll understand you know, the sorts of steps I have to do. Yeah, uh, we have a uh, time for one more question. Yes, you were using this as a uh, WordPress developer. Yes, I am. I don't see you installing any <coughs> WordPress. No. Why do you need Samba? 
because again, it's uh, for the for the IDE part of my use case, where putting uh, putting the WordPress files in a separate directory than where Apache is hosting the website or Nginx is hosting the website, I get all the WordPress code base in integrated in my IDE. Okay. So this is yeah, this is very very specific. And I don't put it uh, straight away in, in my uh, Packer build because uh, I want my box to be, I would say, portable. I want, <coughs> my box, I want to be able to use my box with any other Ubuntu-based Vagrant configuration. And so in, in terms of WordPress specifically, I have another, I have actually just a Vagrant configuration for WordPress. Okay. And that's what's going to, yeah, Vagrant is pretty much what I then use to install WordPress on the VM. One quick question. God damn it. Yeah. Did you consider using Docker for this instead of uh, Vagrant? Yes, but I started, uh, but when I started with this thing, <laughs> with all of this, uh, Docker was not yet existing. Well, Docker machine was not yet there. Uh, personally, I find it actually just easier to keep using Vagrant uh, for development purposes. But in terms of testing uh, my WordPress theme or WordPress plugin or just the whole of WordPress, Docker in that comes very useful. Because then I just uh, set up a test environment in Docker runs all the tests in the Docker container, and then I can just leisurely keep on developing on my favorite box. Thank you, Christoph. <laughs>